final best of three. Well, I guess it's a best of four since we couldn't stream the first game. Second game was Double Bear. Third game crashed into oblivion. And now we have a fourth game of Double Raven. Hi, my name is Ghost. And on the left side of your screen, you have yours truly and false, un false TV underscore, also known as false underscore. And on the right side, you have only Rex. Both fantastic king players and their allies also fantastic people but also kings we're loading into this game now and i have to tell you guys it's gonna be a fantastic and exciting game we've got double raven for you guys today so hopefully we'll see some variance between these two players and see how the decision making really you know pans out into a flesh a flesh a fresh and exciting in, uh, game Hopefully we'll even see maybe some mirrored spawns so that you guys can get the most accurate and interesting idea of how you too want to play Raven Clan. Even someone on the stream's getting hyped, boys. It's time to get excited. So before we start into the game, I, I always try and get into the habit of, of introducing our players, so I can't read that because it's all a bunch of pixel art. Hang on a second, let me uh, wait for false to load in. Alright, so Spawning in on False's team, we have Kiesnev as the red stag player. And, of course, I am sorry that I, I butchered your name every single time. Necrophagist, the also blue stag player. So it's a raven stag stag versus only Rex, the raven player. Misery, the bl the green, <laughs> green bear. And Tonks, the orange boar. And of course, I am your host, the man that they call Ghost, coming back to you with another best of, well, I guess, again, I think it's best of five, technically, um, streamed match. Let's just make sure our, our quality settings are at least reasonable at this size so that you guys can enjoy some high quality Northgard streaming while yours truly can also manage to keep the uh, stream uh, streams for both players at least semi-reasonable. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to keep a note out is how many shores do both players have? It looks like Rex really got shafted in this case. And I mean, when I'm talking about shafted, I'm talking about like, like he's a little puppy that just got tossed onto the highway and an 18 wheeler just, just all, all like nine wheels on each side. Just that's, that's, that's Rex right now. Uh, he's he's in a pretty rough spot. On False's side, though, he's he's looks he's looking to be a little bit less like the highway puppy, and more like a guy that didn't spawn with one shore. Um, it looks like he probably has either two, maybe three. Um, I think he has some uh, cliff face to the right of his base, but he probably has a little bit more space to work with to the north of him because he did spawn further away from his allies. So he's probably going to have a pretty a pretty good time. It does look though like Rex is cur or false, excuse me, is currently in the process of trying to get to the middle of the map as quick as possible. Just because sometimes that 25 extra fame that a player can get with that can get you know uh, as the Raven is is very very important, especially when you're going against an opponent that only <laughs> has one shore. Um, the difficulty of it can be it's important, especially if Rex gets it because then it's 25 fame that he has to make up. Instead of having to just, you know, highway puppy him. Ironically, of course, it looks like uh, Rex's allies spawned with more shores than him. So not besides not even being able to super merc rush, now his allies are going to be in quite, the, quite the, the pickle, if you will. Because they will have to deal with False's multiple merc madness. Taking a look around on the player cams here, though, on Rex's side, it does look like his ally, the Orange Boar, does have a wonderful shipwreck that he might actually just go ahead and trade Rex, basically saying, hey, you come take my uh, my shipwreck, and in return, I want your ruins or something along those lines. But then again, he does only have <laughs> one shore, so is it really that that necessary to really support him? Is it, Or is it more kind of like a uh, uh, an arm or an appendage that has started to rot and just become diseased wouldn't it just be better to cut it off and just get rid of the issue or maybe even just restart the game but hey balanced game balanced rng i still don't have a spectator mode 
it does look like uh, false, or excuse me, Rex does seem to go for this consistent um, build of when he starts his games, he'll open up and then he'll actually starve himself so that he can get a lot of early game wood and uh, money. Better they need to make a spectator mode. Yeah, hey, Zapper, how you doing, man? What's up? <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're we're doing a a very nice calm a calm cast here because uh, it's it's well past midnight. I'm very tired and I don't want my roommates to kick in my door and and Jackie Chan Roundhouse kick me for uh, being too too excited and loud. So we're gonna keep it nice and nice and calm here. This is a very this is relaxed stream because I'm also about to fall asleep on the desk, but. That's besides the point. So uh, it does look like both both teams are still just trying to kind of feel each other out. Actually, Rex getting some pretty bad RNG and getting uh, Wolf attacked this early into the game. Not the biggest thing in the world, but you know it still it still does hurt a little bit. Starting clear his tiles. I don't believe. I mean, most players also one thing that I've noticed is most players actually don't even bother to go for the the uh, bother to go for the their tiles so for example like you'll see that rex won't even bother to get his hunter's lodge or even the fish tile that is right next to him he will pretty much just straight up ignore it get a uh, food silo on his main tile and then pretty much just kind of hunker down on that false on the other hand um looks like he is starting to scout around on his base i am curious to see if he does have another tile to the north of him um besides the one that he's scouting right now if that is the case then we're going to see a pretty lopsided raven uh rush on false's side compared to rex rex actually in the process right now just trying to throw away some of his wounded units doesn't really want to deal with too many uh the too many wounded debuff which is why you're seeing him pretty much just throw away these units because he also gets quite a lot of money just from having those two villagers and it looks like okay so false only has two shore not a significant lead over his raven counterpart but I mean, again, it's two versus one, and those smaller, finer details can be very, very important. It does look like um, False's team also does have quite a significant um, ruin slash shipwreck advantage over his opponents. Both red, brown, uh, both red and brown, excuse me, do have shipwrecks, and then blue has, I believe, either one or two ruins. So being able to trade those out can be very, very helpful on Team False's side. For Team Rex, though, it does look like they're going to have to just kind of hunker down, uh, get some really good trading done, and maybe get some just very lucky engagements. I am sorry for yawning. That's very, very unprofessional, but, you know, casual stream, cool stream, you know what I'm saying? Um, so they're going to have to be a little bit careful. There are some ruins, which does help. Don't get me wrong. Having, like, only one or two ruins on either side is is very helpful but having multiple ruins having two shipyards having um having um multiple ruins it does help quite a bit so boring about this game want to see changes what makes game better at competitive but devs make com campaign mode wow well um it's okay though there's there needs to be a campaign before there had there's a competitive multiplayer it's kind of like it's like you learn to walk before you run, right? A game should have a solid foundation before it has a solid aerial, you know, view, if that makes sense. So that's a really shitty analogy, actually. <laughs> um, like, for, take StarCraft, for example. There's a solid campaign behind the multiplayer. And a lot of RTS games, uh, and at least in, for me personally, I feel like that that's something that the RTS genre has always excelled in in comparison to its fps or 4x counterparts there's there's always been a very interesting and in-depth story that helps kind of draw people in and then there's also a multiplayer that kind of keeps people for the long run while i do think the the campaign um is a fantastic addition and i do think spectator mode <laughs> would be very nice i do understand the devs point of getting a campaign mode out first because for example let's pretend there's no internet how are you supposed to play north guard and enjoy it well if there's no campaign you really can't enjoy it as much as you would you know so it's it's things like that um world of warcraft perfect example there is an rts or element to it 
but there's also the story and lore that really brought a lot of people into the Warcraft scene, you know. Back to the game, though. Um, <clears throat> False has gotten his first long dock out. Actually, I believe that was much later than uh, Rex's. Rex has had his long dock out, I think, pretty much since this game has started. So he's pretty much had an entire year. And actually, if you look at the money, it's not too significant of a change, but that also might be because False grabbed a ruin from one of his buddies. So that could be 200 gold that was just recently grabbed. So if you want to pretend like they were on evil even playing fields, there's probably about 100 some odd gold difference between um, Rex's self-accrued economy and False's self-accrued economy. That being said, though, um, it looks like False is actually going to go ahead and give up uh, Rex, excuse me, is actually going to go ahead and give up his own ruins so that his buddy uh, on the orange side, or I believe that's Tonks, uh, can take his ruins. So again, trying to do some good old-fashioned communism and spread the wealth evenly amongst his friends so that everyone is winning to the maximum ability. The left-hand side, though, it looks like there's just a little bit of a uh, Draugr skirmish going on with, right now with three warriors taking on two Draugrs through winter. I don't particularly like, particularly like this idea for the sole purpose of it's just, why do it through winter, you know? Uh, your units aren't exactly going to suffer for waiting a little bit. He, They will clear this Draugr tile, this Draugr tomb, excuse me, but at the cost, I believe, of at least two warriors possibly even three depending on how this last couple swings go does oh my god the draugr get some boys so that is three dead warriors for basically only one draugr and that's just it's not good that is just not good again um and this is something that i really want to stress if you've noticed neither player has actually bothered with any of the food tiles at all besides getting the stone no food has been no food tiles have been built. I think this is something that I really want to point out here for a lot of the newer players that might be watching this stream or might be watching these players as a whole. You don't actually have to go for the the food tiles. There's no there is nothing saying that you have to build, you know, a hunter's goodness, a hunter's lodge. You don't need it if you play your cards right. It's just a matter of knowing knowing which cards you're going to receive and reacting properly to which cards you get. And in this case, as you can see here, both False and Rex have him reacting beautifully um, to the the deck or the cards that they have been uh, dealt. Rex getting the food silo earlier and having a stronger <clears throat> economy. I think they both even got the lores at pretty much the same time. False going for Carpentry Mastery. I would have liked to see what Rex decided to get. I'm kind of I'm actually quite curious at this point, um, but ooh, that's a very big, that's a very big wolf tile blocking both players. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's five wolves. It's not difficult to do. It's just more annoying. It's actually quite interesting to also see that False is actually building a tower, not on his main tile, but on the tile with the fish. Excuse me. So very fascinating to see him going for that. There is the Thane, so that means he gets an additional three villagers on his side. Uh, Fall, or Rex, excuse me, about 20 fame behind. Which is quite interesting, actually, since he built the Long Dock first, uh, which gave him the money bonus. And actually, False is currently leading in the money. Uh, I would associate that due to probably uh, getting an additional ruins or just using his money um, a little bit more prudently if that's yeah prudent pr prudent would be the word he's he's being very uh coy with his his gold spending because he hasn't been uh explore spamming if you will so rex is st or false still currently just kind of trying to colonize i would assume that he's trying to get to 500 as quickly as possible so that he can be as aggressive as he can this tower is probably going to go up just in the nick of the time yes it does and that wolf will not uh, be able to, to gobble up that lonely villager. Looking over to Rex's side, Rex is actually building quite a bit of military buildings, so we might be seeing Rex just opting to go for a very aggressive Raven style instead of going for that more passive, um, passive economist, if you will, 
from most Raven players that you'll see. Typically, they'll try and get two or three shores and then just use their mercenaries more as the knife in the back as their allies push in on you. So your your two allies will push in onto a main onto you know your opponent's tile, and then while that engagement is going on, the mercenaries from the Raven player will obviously come in and clean up business basically away from the combat. And that's typically the the knife in the back because um, you know where are you going to be able how are you going to move your 10 warriors you have to move them together because you're going you're going to, you're going to want to overpower those two clans worth of military units you're not going to want to leave your 10 warriors back at your base to ward off you know four mercenaries that's just it's just silly so at this point it's really just a matter of um kind of decision making on how both players want to go and it looks like false or rex's decision is he's actually going to instead of being that knife in the back he's going to either be the shield the axe or the throwing axe um of part of his part as part of his uh strategy false though getting the upgraded uh town hall for town hall 2 and he actually just popped his feast for his team for i believe the first time Rax thinking that he's going to go ahead and feast as well so that he can get himself the bonus villagers. There he goes with the 200 fame. And now Rax, or False, excuse me, with the 70 fame lead should, should, at least currently speaking in the sense as, as they are progressing in the same speed, as if you will, uh, should beat his opponent to mercenaries. Now, looking at the gold count, we do have False with a significant gold lead, um, though that might not really matter, though, because if we look over on False's side of the things, holy crap, that's a big block of text. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, it looks like F Rex's team really hasn't actually hasn't really scouted much of his of their opponent's space they've only really been kind of primarily focusing on their own which is is natural since they only have one um one shore tile for their mercenaries so it's you know to be expected if you will but let's see what uh you have responded with i think this is only my mistake because i played 800 plus hours and game i became for me bigger important and me it would be desirable that it was experienced by other players that the threshold of entry was higher that i saw interesting executions of various tactics one is seeing new units buildings lore and knowledge but so far it hasn't it isn't enough and probably i expected too much <clears throat> well i think it's important to note that this game still is in early access um so the game hasn't been fully released and when it does the developers have already profusely expressed that they will not be leaving as soon as the game is done so to say that the developers have stopped developing the game to say that the developers don't have plans after the game is released i think is quite is um quite silly and i think you should just you know stick out for the long haul there's no reason why you should put 800 hours into a game and then just assume that the developers are going to stop i think it's important for you to you know, have that touch on the community, know what the devs are doing, and, you know, see what's going on. I think, I think you'll see when, uh, if you talk to anybody in, in the, the community, you'll, you'll see that there's, there's a lot going on, and don't worry when I say there's, there's plans already in action. <laughs> um, don't, have no fear, have no fear. There's, the community is always growing and active. The developers are doing the exact same, and if we continue on this rate, I would not be surprised if we have a very strong, solid Northguard game, probably within the next month or two. So, don't worry. Rex going ahead and <laughs> going ahead and building a tower on his only, his only shore tile. Um, falls currently at 345, so he's still quite a ways away from getting the 500 fame that he needs. Um, to start using mercs it's not the end of the world that he doesn't have them just yet but it is it is important to uh go ahead and you know preemptively build those towers even if false decides not to use those having a tower in the back just in case when you know uh rex decides to go for this big push he doesn't get attacked from the back and you know dies 
F uh, Rex is currently supply cap though, which is kind of interesting. And actually, if you notice, it's always important to know um, when you're watching a player or if you're in a game, when you see your opponent is got pretty much a, ma a solid majority of his villagers on a specific tile, often with a food silo attached to it, that typically means he or she is quite often preparing for war. And in this case, we can see that Rex is pretty much preparing for war. He's got, uh, I believe that's either three or 540 something gold in his bank, in his coffers right now. He's got eight military prepped for Northgard. Indeed. Loktar Northgard. <laughs> um, he currently has a lot of money banked up. False, on the other hand, he only has two military buildings, or two space for military. He even has a healer's hut, for good god, what is that? Um, so, False is, False is Raven. False is playing for the mercenary Ravens. Rex is playing for the aggressive military Raven, which there is no right answer on to which one is the better. You're going to see what happens when the military Raven attacks the mercenary Raven. You're going to see that it's going to be... It's going to be a hogwash, to say the least. Basically, it's going to be destructive in all, you know, every way, shape, and form. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's, that's a good decision, and sometimes it's not. In this case, it's going to be quite difficult. Um, but it does also greatly depend on how uh, Rex's teammates play. So, for example, if Rex only pushes by himself, and he basically gets met with, you know, the two clans from Team False then it's going to be kind of rough. Hey, Kaiser, how are you doing? Welcome to This Is How I Can Cast, because I don't didn't want to try and bother with Double Steam Viewer, and it was the only way I could do it, so... Uh, making it work. We're making it work. Try hard streams. I'm just getting, like... Stop sending me videos of... Ah, oh, it's Mumbo number five. Oh, yeah, it is. Well, is it bad that I can spot old 90s music? Am I just getting old? Tune in next week to find out more. No. Um, this is actually going to be quite deadly here for False if his team does not look over and basically recognize that... Uh, Fall, that Rex is actually about to start kind of pushing here. We are probably going to see the 802 push. Um, there's the mercenaries for Jarl at 500, and we are going to see mercenaries pretty much straight on to uh, both green and orange. So, oh no, double double orange. Oof, that's going to be, oof, that's going to be rough. Uh, shouldn't be too serious, though, because he doesn't actually have that much money. Uh, so that's... That's pretty much all that uh, I'll be lurking as I get food. That's fine, Kaiser. You should hurry though. This is going to be the only two game, the only cast match that that is remaining. Um, the tower does go up, which is a big deal, but the mercenaries are still kind of whittling away at the villagers of uh, Orange, and there's also a tile being currently decolonized to the north of. Um, Orange's base, which it's not the end of the world, but you also have to re remember that when a tile is lost to, uh, for the boar player, that is two v two villager population that cannot be produced because they because of how the boar plays. So it's you know not the end of the world, but it is a big deal, and we've got a whole mess of axe throwers, and I mean a lot of axe throwers coming in. I mean ten axe throwers. That's and axe throwers, guys. Axe throwers. That is a lot of axe throwers. Um, these guys are pretty much just going to roll through uh, Blue's base here if Blue doesn't react properly. There is no scouting going on, so I'm a little bit worried that uh, these units... No, these units won't starve. That's, that's important to note. These units won't starve, and... Rex actually opting to go for the gear upgrade, which is interesting because he really doesn't have that much money. I would have probably gone just for feeling safe, but even then he really doesn't get that much because he doesn't have a war chief. Um, but now False is going to probably be sweating, and for the sole reason of he has no military units and his allies are about to get... Oh, no, no. False is actually the one that's about to get attacked. Oh, wow. I... Oh, okay, so they actually rotated to the north. So basically what happened was they 
false murked the guy closest to him, which was Orange. And in response, Re both Rex and um, Misery reinforced Orange and then just went straight for the Raven player that was closest to them, which makes sense. But look at false's military units right now. I mean, there's like three or four shield bearers most and yeah here comes false is just trying to find anything to basically pull his opponents back right now but look at all of those units dude there is nothing that false can do to really stop this he should he might as well just go ahead and try and get a tower on his base but yep that's oof, oof that is a lot of damage coming down some warriors going to try and reinforce false here but he doesn't have any military units i mean yes Brown or orange, excuse me, is going to lose that one tile. But look at what's being kind of the the trade-off. He's going to lose one tile for essentially his only military, an upgraded house and a stone tile. Against let's look at how many units this is here. Nine warriors, six shields, and a whole. Oh no, that's on his tile. Okay, well we'll be able to take a look at this in just a second. But it's probably about. 8 shields, 10 axe throwers, and probably about 8 warriors pushing onto one tile. Oh yeah, here we go. It's 10, uh, 10, 11, and 6. Oh crap, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so um, it looks like Rex is actually just trying to micro his axe throwers around the kind of the big contingency of units. The warriors from red are just trying to chase down some of these axe throwers, and they are doing a pretty good job. The problem is, though, there's just not enough. And though these villagers are trying desperately to try and stay alive, the shield bearer and axe combination that is just tearing into them right now is just too powerful. And there goes false. So false has fallen. And, um, well... <laughs> uh, that was a, a pretty decisive uh, victory for Team Rex. I mean, False tried to tried to pull it off with the, the double mercenaries, but in this case, there just wasn't enough to really hold back that, that all-in rush from his opponents. And I don't think he can merc himself defensively, but at this point, it's really just a matter of having Rex uh, clear out. There's the concede from False. Boom goes the dynamite, and, uh, well, false false has fallen. So, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about here when I say that um, it does suck when two, two Raven players fight each other, and then one decides to go for the mercenary route, and the other decides to go for the... Um, the, the warrior route, if you will, and on paper it does look like the warrior route is obviously the much more the much more aggressive option, and it is. Um, but I think if there was if I think if False would have gotten a little bit more time and maybe one more shore, he probably could have put up a much more reasonable fight. But in this case, I think the decision making on Rex's part to just go for that warrior path instead of the mercenary path was a much much smarter decision so uh good decision making for obvious reasons and or for as the reasons previously explained and congratulations to team rex for that win uh they do pull it back to i believe it's now uh three two in favor of false but hey gg to all players